Hey everybody, I hope you had a great week. We made it to yet another live stream, so that is very good. How's everybody doing today? So, today let's see who we have here. We have Colette, good to see you. Rick and Willie, good to see you guys. And we have uh, Blue, that's so great. So I'm so glad everyone is here so far. So being productive, yeah, Blue's doing some really great artwork. I've been looking at really fantastic, you know. So as you can see, I'm branding the channel a little bit more. And so uh, you see I have the Ink Flingers hat and the Ink Flingers uh, baseball shirt, which is done with vinyl. And this is done with vinyl in my studio. And so, you know, really really trying to give the website a look you know give these the live streams a really great look so always great to see colette and so we are doing part two which is really great part two of painting the uh fine art portrait in sepia so let's see here okay so painting the part uh the fine art portrait in sepia so we've been basically working on this and mapping it out, which is really great. Oh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, that would be great, an Ink Flingers baseball team. I would have to be uh, second base, definitely. Uh, so, yes, if that was true, that would be a lot of fun. I do miss sports a lot. And I did play baseball in high school and you know throughout my life so I do miss it so I really so I kind of uh, was inspired today to to make this for the channel so uh, I hope you guys like it and I hope to continue to you know always brand the channel as much as possible and just stand out and be more professional and uh, just take it to the next level because I take the live stream serious I take you guys and girls serious and uh, it's so important to me. So let's see if we can look for um, that picture of her so you all can see what I'm what I mean. Nope, that's not it. Let's see. So I guess I'm going to have to go ahead and bring that in. Oh, yes. So, Rick, thanks for asking. Rick's asked if these shirts are available. These are quality, 50% cotton, 50% polyester, very breathable uh, with these shirts. And I will do the ink flinger. And I'll even go ahead. Hey, what's up, Roy? And put your name on the back like a regular baseball shirt. And so that would be in red vinyl, which is heat transfer vinyl. It really is part of the shirt. And that would be $29.95. So if anyone is interested uh, in getting the shirt or this really cool hat, let me know. Because I think they go great together. I think it looks really fantastic together. And thanks for asking about that, Rick. Uh, so just go ahead and email me. And that would be great. So that's fantastic. Thanks for that, Rick. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I was going to pull up that reference. I'll get that for you in a little bit. Let's see here. And I have, I'm just going to go ahead. Always make sure you test away from your artwork. Make the first couple of sprays definitely not on your beautiful artwork always test away from the work so what I usually do I have this uh, yes the shirts will match the caps so let's say if you wanted uh, let's say uh, you know different color variations if you wanted green I could work that for you all of that you know blue if I know you bought so those who bought a hat you can definitely get a shirt, ink flinger shirt, you know, with the Extreme Patriot Arrow on it uh, for the $29.95. So let me know and I'll just add that for you guys. 
I love it. I think this looks great. I'm going to sport this this summer, so I'm happy. You know, I really think it's cool. And thanks for asking, Blue. I really appreciate that. So I go to Pure Ref, and I'm going to bring up uh, this piece, the sepia. And I know you all can't see it, but uh, here, but it is there. So I do recommend getting the app uh, Pure Ref. You are not going to be sorry. Trust me. Definitely not going to be sorry. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to continue darkening everything, but... Remember what I always say, when you come in cold, you don't want to just jump right into it, you know, staying with the baseball theme. Uh, a relief pitcher doesn't come in and face the batter right away. He throws about 15 practice pitches before he faces the batter. Same thing here is that before you actually go straight in, we're going to use the light mixture, and that's always best to do. I'm going to blow it up, and what I do when I blow it up it helps me to get the focus correct. You just go like that. And as always, you all know that I always want to model the form. And so you see right here on the forehead, the side of the forehead, we have the shadow plane. But since it's, her forehead is rounded, there will be a transitional tone over here. So I'm just going to basically try and do that. And let's see. very lightly and the uh, light mixture of these sepia mixes are really fantastic it's you can really just get incredible minute control and very slowly build up value i mean extremely slowly and that is a plus so i did purchase and receive some color line paper and it's like this uh sort of dull medium yellow that I think is going to go really good with sepia and I'm going to give a review on that for sepia and I'm going to do a proper video on that I think that would be great you know and you know as always we're building up very slowly extremely slow And making sure we don't go too wet, right? That's going to be very important not to go too wet. Now, I was testing these during the week and they erase incredibly. So, you do have really good erasing ability with, with these uh, sepia paints, which is really great. move this over here and you see here I'm making this eye turn her eyelid it is round so when it's turning away from the light it's going to get darker and when it turns towards the light it's going to get lighter I know that sounds rather logical but you know visually we have to get our arms around that And you see, I, I like to move around. So everything that I do with the black and white is exactly the same. Nothing has changed with the sepia. That's why it took me a long time to perfect these mixtures. Because I didn't want to create something that was going to create 
uh, confusion or make it difficult for the artist. For me, I want to make life easier for the artist. I want the artist to have fun creating, not to have new problems to deal with. I'll take care of the problems. You guys take care of painting those really amazing pieces. When you're working with thin mixtures like this, hey Raul, how's it going? Good to see you. When you're painting mixtures like this, and uh, so Roy, how's everything going? Did you get your projector? Roy ordered a projector. I'm not sure if he received it yet. moving around trying to get some of these interesting mid-tones here slowly building things up remember the further you're away the more dis dispersed your your uh, your paint droplets are going to be or your ink droplets and so when you're doing that, you are going to create a lighter value. So you can dilute it more or even increase your distance and it will have a very similar effect. So there's more than one way to get somewhere. Sometimes it might be better to get that sort of more dispersed stippling look by being further away from the surface. And sometimes... It might be better just to dilute them more. going great to see you how are you today and we'll just continue coming in here And so right here, we're just doing, you know, week one and two are kind of interesting, you know. Uh, we always just are, week one and two, basically we're just establishing value and uh, light and dark patterns. So, but this is the important, this is the lifeblood of the painting. You know, that, you know, week seven or week six, when everything comes together, well, that's because of all the work and hard work we've done here. So this is where it all happens. And here's a good time to work on. Remember what I always say, always look for the grain of the skin. Also, look for the grain of the lips as well.
little dagger strokes while you're pumping that trigger. You want to get that kind of rhythm, you know? It's very important. And you can see what, you know, might look like, oh, that looks good. But when you really pay attention, you can see that it's much lighter than it should be. And you're just looking at, you're looking at all the different values. And when you see there's nothing there, but there is a value, you definitely have to address that really quickly. Especially like in the main areas next to the features, the eyes, nose, and the mouth. So something very important to always take in consideration. And then, you know what, I'm going to turn on the air conditioner. And I'm going to put the kettle on. Definitely need a cup of tea today, that's for sure. Okay, so we're just gonna continue moving around here. Let's see. And what's great about this mixture is that it's very very deliberate and you just take your time and you get the values that you need but you're no you're in no rush you're in no rush whatsoever areas may look too dark right now but doesn't matter they're going to come into they're going to come into their own as everything else darkens around them so don't get nervous let's bring this over So that was the fastest kettle ever, huh? Just gonna finish this one spot here. There we go. That's gonna lighten up, but you know, I like to establish it. Yeah, that was really fast, right? The fastest kettle in the West. Actually, I'm in the East. Be right back, guys.
Okay, that wasn't too bad. So, I think that only took a couple of minutes. It took uh, longer than had the tea kettle boiled, right? It boils real quick. So, let's see here. Let's go over here so I can see what I'm doing. And let's see. Pretty soon I'm going to come in with the with the darker mixture, the medium mixture, so that would be pretty cool. Always paint away from your shield, right? You never want to paint towards it, because you paint towards it, it can billow underneath, and that you don't want to do. And let's go ahead and start working on the hands a little bit. That would be good. what you should do you should always build up your values extremely slow as slow as you want to go you need to go slower Let's see how so with this with this light mixture with the sepia you really have control the buildings up and to take your time and lower that air pressure to an obscene amount that most people will say you can't go but that's what these are designed for to give the artist more more control than they ever had you know and of course I have a beautiful hard edge here so I'm going to use my freehand shield and as you know, you're going to spray away the perpendicular. Now we have this beautiful really beautiful reflected light here but we have to realize that that's a reflected light and not a true light so the psi that i'm at right now patty great question is i put it 25 psi at the compressor i set it and forget it i never adjust that i haven't adjusted my my compressors from 25 psi for years 
There's no reason ever if you're working in my method to have a higher PSI. And, um, and then what I do is I just play it by, you know, by feel with the pack valve. Now one of the things is when you are adjusting the pack valve, you can't adjust it when it's off. So you press down on the air and you can adjust it and you can hear it as, it, as you're adjusting it while you have it down. Not pulled back, just down. That's how you would adjust it and get a feel of what PSI you want. Now another good tip is that when you are painting, you want to get a feel of how far back do you pull on the trigger when ink or paint starts coming out. And once you have that, you want to have that muscle memory of when that's happening. I hear some people say, wow, this airbrush, I love it because I just pull back a little bit and the ink comes. And then they say, I hate this airbrush because I have to pull all the way back for when the air comes. Really, it's just you knowing when that happens and then you just have that muscle memory and then you can basically get a good rhythm. If you wanted to come back sooner, like if you wanted to get paint when you pull back sooner, then you can just increase the uh, pack valve a little bit and that will do the trick. So definitely, definitely you want to get that muscle memory of when that, that paint or ink starts to come out because then you can really have control. And of course the one second rule is always in effect. We're gonna get rid of these pencil lines in just a moment or two. freehand shield here and take your time till you find the exact edge that you're looking for always take your time Yes, exactly. It feels exactly like the inks, Willie. I mean, that's... Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. You know, that's the whole thing. That's why it took me so long to develop these, is because I needed to have the same feel of a consistency of the two. So that's why I, I, I could have done them earlier, you know, had them out earlier, but they were a little bit thicker. And I just didn't like that. And I didn't think it was uh, consistent with what I, what I stand for. And so what I stand for is simplicity. And these are definitely that. You know, these are definitely very easy to work with. With this paper, it's not optimal. I'm using this uh, paper. Uh, I didn't get my cans on color line paper until today. So I don't recommend this paper. We're going to muddle through it, but I don't recommend using this paper, this uh, vellum, as uh, you know, as your main painting uh, surface. Not at all. Hey, John, how's it going? Good to see you. So the cap is blocking part of the artwork. I don't see. So I'm looking, maybe if I go all the way over, if I go all the way over, I see it. So what I'll do is I'll just move the artwork up and then I will solve it. Thanks for the heads up, guys. I appreciate it. So John, how are you? And again, like if we were painting, let's say, an egg or a ball, 
a good way to start is at that terminator. Pretty soon we're going to come in with those darker, darker values with the mid-tone, with the medium mixture. Even though this is a light area, it really isn't white. So you gotta make sure you you address that. Even though it, things look light, you can't make it white, you know? You just have to make sure. And I'm gonna keep my, a safe distance. This way I get a less concentrated uh, spray pattern and kinda keeps the paint from skating the further you're away. freehand shield perpendicular and not parallel one second rule is not important it's crucial it's crucial to do a good painting is having great observation and it, great observation is not nothing to do with experience or talent or anything like that, natural ability. So remember that. Now what's interesting is that this area is actually darker than the hand, so the background is darker than the hand. Remember, a lot of times a shape is, is defined not by the shape itself, but by the adjacent shape that is, you know, kind of helps define it. So that's basically what's happening. And remember, we're not caring about whether it looks like the model right now. We're not caring about when the estimated time of completion. Actually, good question, Blue. This is, uh, I think it's like 95 pound uh, Bristol vellum. It's strap or I had this uh, pad for like ever. And so that's basically why it was in my studio. And I didn't get my color line paper, you know, the tan color line paper that would have been perfect for this. And so basically, this was the next best thing. But now I did get the shipment today. Yes, so happy. So you see how there's always like a painting inside a painting, right? And and that's how you gotta look at it. You know, yes, we have this hand here and it's a supporting actor, but it's sort of like a painting inside a painting. So we have to really pay close attention to it. 
to have an effective painting, you have to uh, make sure that you give things importance of observation. It may not be the most important thing, but it needs to be observed in the same way that you are over here. So that's uh, a very important element. So same thing here, we want to make sure that we start making this finger turn as we made these fingers turn. So, so definitely. the large shapes. And with this paper, you start getting too wet, you'll start to see that the, uh, that the ink or the paint will actually beat up. And that's not what you want to happen. So you gotta, you have to keep your distance, spray once and move. Sort of like, you know, jab and move. You know, like the boxers say. Don't stay in the same spot. Pay attention. The one second rule. Don't try to get too fine too early. Because then you'll pay the price. Again, we're going to use our freehand shield to get this edge right here. There we go. Just to get that little edge. Of course, all that stuff will be well more defined as we go. see where else we can work on for now so we have this dark coming down here and then we have this shape right here Pay attention to what's happening. Although this is a blast of light, it isn't white, so we're going to make sure that we take care of this. Use our freehand shield. And then we can deepen this dark here. Ever so slowly. Thank you. I appreciate that. Patty says uh, it looks awesome. I appreciate that so much. Yeah, pretty soon we're going to come in with that medium mixture.
it's good to try and get full coverage you know of your of your paper so you can really start to uh, assess all the different values as they relate to one another wipe off the freehand shield and let's do this dark right here I think pretty soon I'm going to come in with that media mixture and really bring the, some of these values start deepening them up that would be great I take a sip of my tea here oh wow that came out good I do make a good cup of tea I have to say okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, extreme Patriot arrow 105 and it's the exact same everything as the Extreme Patriot Arrow. The only difference is it has a larger cup. But everything, the needle, the pack valve, uh, you know, the backing, uh, the customized trigger, all the things are the same of the regular Extreme Patriot Arrow. So let's come over here and get my uh, medium mixture. always make sure that you mix your paints in the cup never I mean not in the cup but in a cup outside of your airbrush please take that extra moment we're going to make sure that the airbrush is working 100% before we ever go near our painting. So now I have this medium mixture here. Let's see how this is flowing. Beautiful. Wow, that's nice. Okay. Just adjust that pack valve a little bit. And let's start deepening some values, okay? Let's start doing that right now. And you can see how much faster things move with the media mixture. But, just make sure that you don't go too close with your distance too early, okay? Maintain the same distance, very crucial. And this reflected light right here. This gets really dark. Well, let me fix this. Sometimes this border kind of moves on me. hand remember the hand was much darker than over here but also the background was darker so what I can do which is going to be cool is I'll take this that I cut out and put this right here let's see I guess we'll move the border away just for precision sake Hey Todd, how's it going? Good, good to see you. Okay. And maybe 
you can sort of reveal some of these other objects by what's adjacent to it or adjacent to them. Okay. Very slowly. Well, you see, you don't want that billowing, so you want to put a magnet right close to the edge. And remember, you're painting away from the shield. And you want to make sure that you're not getting too wet in that area. Here it's much darker, right? But we want to make sure we cover this border too. So let's bring that border back. This is the heavy lifting part. I'm going to slowly darken, but we're not going to go crazy. But we are paying attention to the background and all these elements. Not getting too wet. That's important, not to get too wet. Hey, Mr. Johnson, how's it going? Ah, uh, this is actually Mylar, believe it or not, sir. So, yeah, it's like, I guess it's very similar to acetate, right? I'm going to keep my, free, my shield there. I'm going to keep that nice and dry. Let's go inside here with the hand. Boy, we are utilizing all of our magnets today. Then we got a little wet there, so I'm just going to tap. There we go. There's no difference in the way that I'm painting. No difference whatsoever. The only thing is, is that these are a little bit more liquidy than the India inks. So that's the only thing. I might be moving with a little more trepidation. But that's it. So we'll just go ahead and blow some air. I love the way this uh, 
Extreme Patriot, the customized Extreme Patriot 105 is flowing today. Oh, so beautiful. this there. Let's just remove this. Be careful, Tim. There we go. Ah, okay. So there we go. So you see, a little more definition, a little more pulling and pushing and everything like that. And you can see that we do have some deepening of that hand that we need to do. And we'll do that next week, that edge. And I don't think I have cut out that edge not this edge over here I can try and freehand it and that's you know that's okay too good question so Mr. Steve asked how does the mylar handle the paint such as puddling well always you have to realize that that's a slick surface so you have to be a lot more careful not to overload and you know hit an area and move hit an area and move never stay in that area for more than a fraction of a second and because if we do as you know then we start getting that puddling and it's just no fun at that point great question so I want to get this really beautiful hard edge here because her hand is going to define her scarf so I think that's pretty cool and I am in no rush now if you want this as smooth as possible meaning uh, you know no blotching then make sure you maintain your distance and don't vary your distance because once you vary the distance, you change the code, the cone, uh, as it comes out of the airbrush. Once you do that, you change the intensity. Therefore, you're changing how dark it is or light it is. So that's why if you want control, master distance. People don't talk about that. I don't know why. But as I came into the art airbrush world, that's the one thing I talk about all the time because that has been an epiphany for me. And that has been like the most important breakthrough in my art is realizing that distance is the key, not just the actual distance, but maintaining that distance as you paint. And uh, I hope you don't work too hard, sir. Hey, Brad, how's it going? Good to see you. See how bringing in that that dark, getting that edge there, and that value difference really brings that hand forward.
Okay, so now you see right here, we have a real dark area that's actually darker than the dark of the chin. So let's just establish the dark of the chin a little bit. As we darken it, we're going to reveal this reflected light in her neck, which is quite interesting. Make sure we don't get too wet. And there's a beautiful dark value right here. Pay attention to what's happening with these values. Don't vary your distance. Pump that trigger so you're not getting, you know, like a, a uniformed value because there's a lot of lumps and bumps and everything in skin and flesh, especially in the neck area. So you want to pump that trigger and get that variation. Make sure we have this down here. You don't get too wet. And I hope you can see how we are just ever so slowly darkening our values, moving around. I have a dark here, I move up there just to balance it out, which is so important. That tea is good tonight. Make this happen. Just getting some of those deeper values as we go. Take care, Patty. Great to see you. Let's see. We'll move this up a little bit. the little eyelashes just worry about that big mass shape okay you can't do both not at the same time not effectively or not as effectively and I don't care who you are it's always easier to handle smaller shapes and simpler tasks 
and trying to do two at a time. So Steve, I didn't forget about you. I have your prints done. I just have to make sure that uh, I get them out. I have a large shipment to send out this week, so you'll definitely get them. So just uh, make sure you know I didn't forget you, Mr. Steve. Notice the control you can get with these inks and the Extreme Patriot Arrow and the Extreme Patriot 105. I mean, that's where the rubber meets the road, you know, when the inks and the airbrush really kind of come together. That, to me, is, uh, you know, fantastic, you know. So that I love. So what I'm going to do before I go into the hair, because we'll get lost in the hair, right? So let's just go ahead and start working on this uh, zygomatic arch here. I'm just going to work on a very cute cheekbone here. Now always make sure that you don't look at exactly what value it is because if you did you would come in this value and hit it here but that would be premature you want to build the values up so you're not looking for exact value at this point you're looking for relative value and you squint your eyes and you can see the large shapes those large shapes are going to get you home that's what's going to help you. And keeping your distance the same. You have to keep your distance the same, you know. Thank you, Colette. Colette says it looks beautiful. I appreciate that so much. Thanks so much for the encouraging everybody. Hi. So one of the things, I don't know if you all know that, but I really enjoy... Uh, languages and one of my students is actually from Italy and so since I speak French not French uh, Spanish a little bit of Portuguese we're able to communicate Carlo and I uh, he speaks Italian he speaks a little he speaks a little bit of English he speaks a little bit of Spanish I speak Spanish rather fluently uh, and you know I learned uh, Portuguese for a bit so with Google Translate we're able to so I'm able to actually uh, help international students so you know and I'm also learning German at the moment so I'm a, I'm a I just love language but I just want everyone to know that you know if you don't speak English if you don't feel you have a, a grasp on English we can still you can still take a course with me and I guarantee that we will communicate because like I said I'm just in love with languages and uh, so I definitely will make sure we make it work and I wouldn't say that unless I have a student who uh, you know in Italy and we did it we did two great projects together already very talented artists Oh, Colette says, how do we order the hat and t-shirt? Just uh, either email me at paintedglyphs at gmail.com or instant message me on Facebook. So it is paintedglyphs at gmail.com. I will have it up on the website in, in uh, maybe a week or so. Paintedglyphs at gmail.com. Email me. That would be great. And let's see, text, okay, so 
see if I can put this on the screen for everybody. And we'll hit OK. And let's make this a reasonable size. See, there we go. Paintedglyphs at gmail.com. If you're interested in purchasing one of those shirts, it'll help out the channel. And also, this is high quality shirt, high quality artistry. I make sure that I do it correctly. Uh, you know, I have all the equipment. I do it all in house by myself. So that's why the prices are so low. So this shirt is twenty nine ninety five, and the hat is fourteen ninety nine. If you were to buy both of them, it would be thirty nine ninety nine. If you're going to buy both the matching hat and the shirt. So that's pretty cool. So Omas, how you doing? Good to see you. Some random German practice. Oh wow. Good morning. Good morning. Right from Berlin. Oh now great. Danke. Danke Omas. That's so great. We got Germany in the house. <laughs> So I have on our library, we have online services on with our library. And what's really cool is that with the library we have online, we have free Rosetta Stone in any language. So I'm just loving the German one, you know? So Omas, are you from Germany? And if that is, that's really cool. Oh, the cat, Steve. Oh, was the cat back there? I was wondering what you were talking about, referring to, Steve. Yeah, she was back here. Yeah, it's a little gray cat. She's my little friend. Yeah, she keeps me company. Since the pandemic, it's just me. But thank God for the little kitty, you know? So now as you can see, I'm gonna deepen some of these values here in the hair. Always remember that we are not, not concerned with whether it looks like her or not. Wow, look at that, it's 1040 already. I was so engrossed in the in the work and talking to everybody. I can't believe it's 1040 already. It's really interesting. Oh yes, her name is Suki. S-O-O-K-I-E. I didn't name her, an ex-girlfriend did. Uh, yeah, so she's, uh, I think it's from that movie, that show True Blood or something like that. Hey, bonjour. Viva la France! <laughs> so cool! Abra, abracad, abracadabra! So that is wonderful! So we have an international group today. I love it! Thank you so much! Merci beaucoup! Get a nice European flavor today! <laughs> Again, you want to always spray away from your from your shields, and I'm just going to see how when I maintain my distance, you get a really beautiful even gradation. You don't get any blotchiness, unless that's what you're looking for. And how you would get that blotchiness would not be by moving your distance around. But would get by pumping that trigger and kind of uh, creating a distance between your spray pattern, you know, pumping your dis, you know, kind of having a distance between where you spray. And you see how this is all dark here. So we're gonna bring this down. So, you know, with this technique, along with the way that I work 
that we work in the Airbrush India inks is that we have to make sure that we have patience. Patience is everything. Really dark over here too. Maintain your distance, so important. Spray away from your freehand shield. You don't want it to, you don't want it to, to sneak underneath because that's what it wants to do. So today we have a little bit of a smaller group, but I don't care. I really just, all I care about is whoever's meant to be here is going to be here. And so I don't care how big it is, how small it is, how many subscribers I got. That's not important to me. What's important is that those who are meant to be here are here. And those who are getting something from this are, you know, I'm helping out their art career and I hope I'm doing that inspiring in some small way see how that ear has to be so understated and how you do that is the values so you'll hear I'm playing the kazoo This value is so close to the dark there. Oh, thank you, Blue. I appreciate that. And looking at everyone's work, you all inspire me too. And I want you all to know that. So, you see how the dark here and then it moves down the hand right so what we want to do is come over here so if any of you or anyone out there is is in the market for a new airbrush and you want something that's going to give you tight detail and not cost you six hundred dollars i actually sell these airbrushes that i customize and it's the uh, badger extreme patriot arrow and i make many changes to it that makes it a detailed powerhouse that i would go head to head with any custom micron out there i go head to head with them as you can see this is a very small portrait and i'm not missing a beat as far as detail and uh so so for 149 us i ship it internationally to france and germany uh, Italy, South America, you let me know. I will customize it for you. I will test it. Every airbrush I test uh, for at least an hour, I test it. So you might not get it as quick, but you will get it working perfectly. I don't know if you all have experience out there, but how many times have you bought an airbrush when it wasn't really tested 100% or wasn't tested by an artist? And all of a sudden you're like, wow, this airbrush doesn't feel right. Well, with me, your airbrush will feel right because it doesn't leave my studio unless it perform performs like I'm doing today. So I know, I know what makes an airbrush great. And that's why when I test the airbrush that you purchased from me, that airbrush is gonna have great qualities. A lot of times when people have trouble painting especially an airbrush they really kind of beat themselves up thinking that it's them it isn't them is that your airbrush is not calibrated it's not tuned up 
that's the problem. And so I know I feel good about what I do because I'm really helping out artists and sort of liberating them from airbrushes that aren't working correctly. So you see as I'm bringing that dark in, those hands are starting to look even better. It's all about relative value. I'm not going to go ahead and pump in a freehand shield over here in the shadow because in the shadows there are very few hard edges. So that's why you wouldn't see me using any freehand shields in here at this moment. And some might say, well why didn't you get rid of those pencil lines? Well, they're like, pencil lines are very similar to training wheels when your little one is learning how to ride a bike. They're important to have and they're important to take off, but don't take them off prematurely otherwise your little one's going to crash. So you want to make sure that you're using those pencil lines to its fullest and then you don't need it anymore. And now we're going to do some subtle transition tones right over here. So notice that I'm moving around. And notice how subtle, after looking at the medium mixture, how subtle the light mixture is. Everything looks dark in the early going, but we haven't even gotten to the last, to the darkest values yet. So everything is going to lighten up dramatically. Oh, so this is sepia. Yes, this is sepia, my friend. Definitely, uh, Steve. And Rick says, do you use the lid on the cup absolutely 110 percent of the time all you have to do is turn it and boop. one of the things i like about uh the extreme patriot arrow and also the extreme patriot uh, 105 my customized versions and on the regular versions too that these caps are on tight so they're not going to pop off which is really good you know and let's see and blue says did the ink erase when you uh yes it will it definitely will it definitely will come off uh when i'm ready let me see if i can do a demonstration here see here we have some pencil lines and we can just see how how nicely they erase just ever so beautifully but you don't want to do it prematurely so they also these uh, mixtures also you can erase to get reductive detail with these which I think is fantastic more so than the airbrush and the inks move this move me out of the way okay so let's say right in here you want to go ahead and erase this painting kind of has a Albert Dora kind of feel to it. It's 
amazing, you know, each painting that I do, and I'm sure each painting that you do, takes on its own life for us, doesn't it? You know? And then let's move on over to this hand here. And we'll erase some of these pencil lines. It's very beautiful when it comes together. So good question. And you see, I could really get in there and erase this, which I absolutely love. You know, how I developed this, I actually really love it. See, I can come over here and we can go ahead and do some erasing techniques. Let's look in her lip area, see if we have some work to do here. Not too much because we're nearly going, but I'm sure you would really like to play with these right because these are really fantastic to work with and uh, so email me at paintingglyphs at gmail.com and you'll be uh, on the list for the first batch will be coming later this month and they're going to be selling out so I only can make a finite amount right now and so I'm in the process of bottling and everything like that so email me at paintingglyphs at gmail.com and I'll put you on the list for the pre-order. You won't find these anywhere else. These have been developed by me over the course of a whole year. here with this eraser and we can get this really nice light just hits there like that and let's zoom out hey John how's it going good to see you thank you so much I appreciate that my friend So, um, I'm liking the way things are developing slowly, right? Not, not too crazy, just very slowly. Okay, so going to darken these lips here, right here in the corner. So I'm, um, you know, now that, well, I was hoping that things would get much better, uh, but I am going to be working from models again, so that's going to be interesting, working more on uh, compositions and stuff like that photographing my model getting much more control over what I paint which is going to be artistically very very liberating for me so once things get a little better with COVID hopefully uh, I'll be able to pose the model again 
as opposed to working from photographs of other of photographers. So remember we touched on how uh, we revealed the reflected light here. So I'm just going to very lightly pull out this reflected light here. Now remember value is is always uh, no the sotards don't get a lid Rick but uh, the extreme I mean the extreme Patriot arrows do um, that they get a lid I believe uh, all of the side feeds get one but no very true the uh, the omnis get a get a one of those as well. Let's just go and try and establish some of the lights in the hair. Nothing too crazy. Just get the overall feel of that. Let me, this always adjusts. I guess it's because my hand moves around. This always adjusts. We're just going to work on the hair a little bit. This is my first full blown sepia painting in about a year so it's been a while but it's like riding a bike Continue working on the hair here. Just, just looking at the major shapes, nothing too crazy. Just establishing it so when we darken it, we'll just know where the uh, light shapes are in the hair. here. Oh, my glove. There we go. Definitely don't want to release oils onto our painting, right? So, Thanks, Rick. Rick's saying she's looking fantastic. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you, my friend. As you can see, I like to move around. So since we are working on white paper, we're not going to have the luxury of the white pastel, I don't believe. I will try it, but I don't think it'll work. So we're going to have to adjust our technique. It's no problem. I like adjusting. 
Look at that little piece of fuzz. It's driving me crazy. It won't go away. There it goes. Thank you, Omas. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, he says that my work is of Olympic gold. I appreciate that uh, very much. So very encouraging. You know. You know what it is. Uh, we just have to stick with it, Omar. You know, like I don't, I don't know if you've seen my live streams in the past. Some of them look like they weren't gonna come out too well. But I just stick with. I just stuck with it. You know. I just said to myself, I'm going. I'm gonna just do this and do it, you know, finish it, you know. Ah, oh, thank you. Ah, oh, Steve, thank you so much. And I appreciate that. I hope you have a great night. And uh, take care of yourself. And I hope to see you next week, sir. Look at that, it's 11.04 already. Just like every painting has its own, own feel, its own emotion, its own personality, I really feel that every live stream, I've been doing live streams right now, every, I think it's been every week for four years on Wednesday nights, and every one is different. And you know, there were some live streams where nobody was there. And I see people do live streams and they'll do nothing until someone goes there and they won't say anything. But for me, if I'm doing a live stream and no one's there, I'm still going to talk as I am <laughs> right now. You know, talk about the technique and everything. Uh, and that's what I did. Nearly going, maybe two or three people. There was one Thanksgiving, there was only one person. Uh... It was just, it's really funny how, you know, how you have to take your lumps in this. But now, you know, every week is just really exciting. You never know who's going to be here. Great people from Germany and France and Canada and, you know, Italy, United States, of course. And just fantastic, you know, everything is, uh, it's just a very, very alive kind of thing. Some are more, some live streams are more upbeat and the conversation is flowing. And then just tonight, everyone's kind of chill. And there's nothing wrong with being chill, that's for sure. Don't always have to be, uh, you know, it's probably been a long week for everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> the way how serious life is lately. It's good to just come someplace and just kind of chill out, right? And just talk about art and kind of inspire each other. There's nothing wrong with that. Let me see. Do I have this corner? Oh, you know, this corner right here. I think I can get that. So let's see. I'm going to move this over. I want to hit that dark right there because that light area is just bothering me because like I always say, the shape of a of an object is not always defined by the object itself, but many times is what is adjacent to it. And right here is really shaping up that thumb, you know? So we're going to go ahead and try and try and get this. Wait till we come in with the darker um, sepia. That's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going on schedule right now, you know. This is usually where we are in part two if we were working with the regular India ink mixtures, right? So everything's looking the same. Uh, it's just interesting, you know, and this is what we do, you know. What I do is I always, I always force myself to go outside of my comfort zone. I could have done just another you know, black and white India ink and it would have been just fine, but that would have been a lot very comfortable for me. And I don't want to be comfortable, you know? I just don't want to. I want to really push the envelope and explore and see the possibilities. 
Oh, Rick says he's waiting patiently for his parts for his 105. Oh, great. And Rick, your, your airbrush is going in the mail today. It's already packed up, and I put some extra goodies in there for you. You're going to be happy. Some extra gifts. Rick purchased a Extreme Patriot Arrow from me, and I tested it for an hour and a half. And that's going out tomorrow, so that's all complete. So I make sure that when I sell an airbrush that it does what I want it to do, you know, and what I expect from an airbrush. So let's see. Let's spray this off to the side, make sure we're getting... Okay. So this edge... Ooh, so what you want to do, you don't want it to billow underneath, so you put those magnets real close to the edge so this way it has less of a chance to billow right so same thing here put those magnets real close to the edge there and this is even how dark we're going to get we're going to get much darker you know Oh, you're very welcome, Rick. Thank you for having the honor to make you an airbrush. And I pray you do a lot of amazing paintings with it over the over many, many, many years, decades. They want to build that dark up very slowly. I don't, Rome's not built in a day. I don't have to go crazy and blast it. You take your time. We'll get there when we get there, when we get there, you know? So Alma says, where can I learn the best about the history of airbrush art? You know what's interesting, Alma? <coughs> Great question. Oh, about the history of airbrush art. Uh, if you email me, I'll send you some links of some really cool things I found out about airbrush art, but there really isn't much going about it, you know? It's still in its infancy as far as an art form. You know, it was big for illustrators and stuff, but as an art form in itself, it's still in its infancy, which Omar, I feel, is really exciting, you know? Not much is written by art historians or anything like that. And that's why, you know, I, I came from the fine art world before I started airbrushing in 2000 and 2011, 2012. And I originally just wanted to use the airbrush as an underpainting for my pastels. And, and then I sort of just fell in love with the medium and what it could do. And that was so exciting. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, everyone in the airbrush world were like, why are you here? Because the air, you know, fine artists don't really bother with, because I was established as a pastel painter. I was a signature member of the Pastel Society of America. I won about 50 uh, national, international awards for my pastel paintings. I was uh, in the... Uh, artist magazine I you know so I was pretty established in pastel for me to come in and do airbrush was quite interesting and unheard of for someone in mid-career but I fell in love with it so much and but what I found was that the art world really doesn't accept airbrush but that's what I'm here for I'm going to I'm gonna blow the doors open I'm gonna break the ice and I always said I came to I came into the airbrush world not to just, you know, you know, just blend in. I came to shake things up, and that's what I want to do, right? So that's a great question, Omar. But yeah, I don't think there is much on, on, on the airbrush, yeah, on the history of the airbrush, but uh, as far as airbrush art, not much. Sorry for the long answer. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Air Todd says, Rick. You're going to like it. I got one. Oh, thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you so much for purchasing one. And I really, really appreciate that. 
A happy customer is the best advertisement. And, you know, just so many great people I've met from making these airbrushes. And I learned so much about airbrushes. What are some of the things that keep it from really performing well? Like, um... The needle packing, I know how to adjust it so it's just tweaked perfectly. And that's that's the difference, you know, that I actually will go in with a special tool and adjust the needle packing. And that makes a big difference. And also a lot of times the companies will put in gaskets that don't need to be there and I get them out of there. Because nine times out of ten, those gaskets are just down the line going to cause problems. And also... One of the other things is uh, making things airtight. And I used to use the uh, Teflon tape, but now I use ChapStick, and ChapStick works really well. It's not intrusive, uh, it's real cheap, and it's so easy to do. So I learned so much. Oh, so yes, yeah, so Rick was saying about uh, Dr. P.H. Martin Inks, you know they're, they're good, but you know where they're not good? In the earth tones. In the earth tones, they are abysmal. See, when you're working with earth tones, you know, like a terracotta or, you know, a burnt umber or something like that, uh, it's made with minerals, so the mineral particles are bigger and they don't flow well through the airbrush. So they haven't perfected that. So that's where they're in big trouble. Uh, but with the greens and the, the reds, uh, are really nice with the PH Martins and their black is not bad but you know what's horrible they're white they're uh, Naples yellow kind of color ooh not good at all uh, so yeah very astute yeah it's they have work to do whether they're going to develop it that's up to them but I wish they would see how I'm building up these values here developing the thumb and you'll see when I lift this how that thumb is really going to be developed. And not only that, and how we're going to develop that chin by darkening this area. Let's take a little magnet and put it right here. You know, it's all about getting into the flow, right? You know, uh, you know whether you're working in sepia or black and white it's all about getting into that flow and that's where you see I am right now I'm just I'm just in the flow of it right that's it and let's go ahead and uh, lift that up and see if we're happy with what we have we have like 9,000 magnets on here so <laughs> let's see Oh, look at that. Yeah, see how beautiful that's starting to happen? Yes, we have work to do to bring that, you know, closer in line. But see that beautiful contour we have right now? Hey, Nameless, how's it going? So glad you made it. Oh, I'm so sorry your internet was out. And so you see how we went ahead and uh, really developed... Those, that, that thumb there, those thumbs, and let's put this as the uh, negative here. Like I said, it's a quiet day, you know, this is a quiet week, but I'm good with that. My success is with individuals, not with the masses, you know, some people get that way, you know, they're just as massively, you know, popular YouTube person, and God bless them, I'm very happy for them, but I don't see that for myself, I see, I see me being smaller, you know, and that's where I shine in these more intimate live streams. And you can see by putting down this uh, 
negative area, now I can go ahead and kind of bring in those other areas into, into harmony. Because you see how the values are so far away, we got to bring them closer. We have to. Ah, that's not what we wanted to do. Okay. Right over here, we're just going to darken. You know, we'll work on this area, not this yet, because it'll, it'll, we'll get over spray over here. So we want to keep it, keep it clean, right, guys? We have to keep it clean. So let's see if we can darken some of these edges over here. Oh, yeah, Rick, it's been a long day for you, huh? Well, that's cool. We're just relaxing, you know? So, so this is a good place to relax and just talk about art. And we're out of ink. Let's see. Now... Always do that far away from your artwork, very far, and always test never on your artwork when you put in more ink or paint in your hairbrush, because disasters do happen, and you want to make sure you have less disasters and more really good paintings. Just deepening of some values here. Let me finish up my tea. Oh, I did really good. That was a really good green tea with lemon today. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> As you can tell. See where it gets a little wet? Be mindful of that and make sure you have a little paper towel. Because when you spray, you don't want to be shooting that across the mylar onto your work. That would be horrible. So what's the game plan, right? So you might ask, Tim, what's the game plan? The game plan basically is to Keep darkening up, you know, the values slowly. Keep working on the relative values. Slowly getting detail. Erasing some of the pencil marks. Erasing out some of the lights. And then doing one layer upon layer. And just sticking with the program. So I'm going to stick, you know, I'm going to do the two airbrush method where one airbrush is going to have the light mixture and one will have the medium mixture and I'll work back and forth so you might ask well why don't you just have one airbrush well let's say I just have the medium mixture and I'm working and let's say there's an area that needs a light mixture well a lot of times every one of us will be kind of uh, complacent and say well I can try and get that with the medium mixture when we know darn well that we have to use the light mixture for that so that's why it's always good to have that two airbrush method. It keeps us honest, you know? We'll always reason why we can take the easy way out. Trust me. I'm very diligent with my art and I still have to be tough on myself. A lot of my students, they say they don't get away with anything and they don't because I don't let myself get away with anything. And my goal is when, with my students, is that eventually they won't let themselves get away with anything that they'll have that aesthetic criteria and they'll be just as tough on themselves that's my goal i 
I love, I'm starting to get that feeling of peace with her, you know? And that's just happening, you know, by paying attention and working things together. There's no rush. Hey, Fuzzy, how's it going? Oh, yeah, oh, I drank it all. <laughs> Next time, Fuzzy, definitely. Great to see you. Fuzzy is one of my students, and she is doing so fantastic. She's just amazing. Uh, so, yeah, so she is great. Great to talk to. You know, one of the great things about teaching is that I, great to, I get to meet such amazing people. You know, every one of my students, they're just such a pleasure. Um, I'm really blessed. Oh, thank you, Fuzzy. I appreciate that. Little by little, you know, we're just going to darken her. We're working in sepia, so it's a little interesting as far as, you know, our method and how we get there. But, you know, it's uh, a lot of fun. Let's darken this uh, reflected light here underneath her chin. Because the, what's happening is, is that the value disparity is too far so we have to bring that into harmony so it's funny a lot of times with this technique of working slowly as we're working, it looks like nothing's happening, like watching the, the hour hand. <laughs> but at, at the end of, let's say, a couple of hours, you're like, whoa, that uh, really comes together. It's just having that patience, guys, you know? It's so important. All right, so let's see here. Let's work on this little dark area of her nostril here. So how is the sound and picture quality today? Pretty good, everybody? A lot of times you, you want to get reacquainted to when that ink is coming out. You kind of get that feeling, you know, that sort of cadence, right, of when that's coming out. And then you could have much better control because you know when it's coming out. You don't want to keep pushing back and looking for when it's going to come out and then it's like, psh. So always get that information before you go on to your artwork. That's a really important concept. Anyone with any questions, this is a good question to ask. If you haven't gotten it fully what I was saying, that's a really important thing is to find the cadence of when it's, when the air, how much you pull back that the actual paint or ink comes out and how important that is, you know? Oh, thank you, Brad. So Brad says that the picture quality uh, and Rick said the picture quality was good. And thank you, Blue, and everybody. I appreciate that. I'm just going to increase my distance, get more of an even value here. In her nose area. And let's calm this down here. Still there, but we just calmed it down a little bit. So we have to see that you know, although there might be a dark next to it and it appears to be a white, but it really isn't. You know, it really has a lot of value in there. 
And so that's what we're looking at. So why did I pick this picture? Well, the way that the uh, values were very earth tony, they kind of had a sepia feel to them. So that kind of helped me. I didn't have to adjust it a little bit. But one of the things you want to look for is that you want to be able to paint black and white from working with a color image. And that's, that's when you're really advanced. Put some of these lights in here. Okay. Let's pull that down. Go. Oh, thank you. So Fuzzy says she likes the red hat. I appreciate that. Yeah, I just made it today. It's fun. I love the red, you know. Red is cool. Yeah, I like the red-white combination. Where I grew up, I didn't go to high school there. Uh, my brothers and sisters did. I went to high school in New York, but the uh, town, which was a big football town, they had red and white colors. So that's why I have like an affinity to red and white as a combination. Oh my God, everybody. It is... Uh, 1129 so blue says 1499 for sale and the shirt also is for sale we need to build that baseball team <laughs> that's right so I'll be the second baseman so we need outfielders pitchers catchers first base third base and a lot of pitchers <laughs> so it's 1130 everybody if you're interested in the in the hat or uh, if you're interested in purchasing the hat or this shirt just email paintingglyphs at gmail.com and as you can see you know it's uh, it looks pretty good it matches and this is a nice looking hat very good quality as well as the shirt really good quality 50% cotton and 50% polyester makes it really breathe and great for the summer and just warm enough for the autumn coming up so I hope you guys all have a great week thank you for hanging out with me and God bless, guys.